Today on CityCast Philly, there are a lot of new policies aimed at improving Kensington, a neighborhood in North Philly that's long been the center of the city's opioid epidemic and a hotspot for homelessness. 7th District Council Member Ketsi Lozada is one driving force behind these changes. I'm speaking with Lozada about the challenges facing her district and her favorite spots in the area. It's Monday, March 25th. I'm Trine Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Council member Ketsi Lozada, welcome to CityCast Philly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. And thank you so much for having me. Sure. Thanks for being here. You were reelected this past November to serve your first full term representing the 7th District. Can you tell me about your district? What's something you think not enough people know about the 7th District? Um, yes, this last election was a really exciting one. Um, I had the opportunity to serve my first four-year term. And what many people don't know about the 7th Council District is that it is extremely diverse. I represent some of the poorest residents in the city of Philadelphia. Um, I have middle-income families, and I have some families that are a little more well-off. And so the district, depending on how you travel and where you travel through, is a really great reflection of the city of Philadelphia. Uh, You can find yourself in El Centro de Oro, which is where uh, in the Fairhill community where many of our Latinos live, you can find yourself in Hunting Park, which is a very diverse neighborhood uh, made up of black and brown residents. Um, you can find yourself in Juniata, where we have a, a concentration of some of our Arab Americans um, and Asians, as well as Latinos. There's a lot of uh, folks that come from different parts of the U.S. and other countries, and they make up what is the Seventh Council District. I know that there's a lot of work that you do and that you focus on, but I want to start with one neighborhood, and that's Kensington. Last month, you and three of your colleagues on council launched the Kensington Caucus, and I saw on Instagram that you all even made Letterman jackets. Why did you all form this group? I think it was important to uh, form the group of the four of us as a caucus, and basically, we needed to ensure that together we work to create policy and and legislation, make decisions on the ground that would directly impact community residents. Uh, And taking the opportunity to sit down and purposefully talk to each other about what we were hearing really showed us that many of the residents in our districts, regardless of where they were, really were concerned about some of the very same things. And so it made sense for us to work together strategically to create policy and work together with the administration to find ways to improve the quality of life uh, for the residents of all of our districts. What are some of those specific policies that your group is focused on? We've been talking with businesses, and so I'm sure that you all have heard that there is a policy or an ordinance in place that would require some of our our businesses on our commercial corridors to close uh, between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. The purpose of that was to ensure or to create another tool for some of our public safety officials to be able to uh, identify what was exactly happening on the commercial corridor and put their finger very quickly on the illegal activity or activity nuisance activity that happens during that time. Uh, We have started a 24-hour cleaning pilot that would require those who have commercial corridor cleaning contracts to address the trash that was accumulating uh, during the course of the day throughout the target area. We should not have been seeing the the amount of trash that was being accumulated if services were being poured into that particular area. And what we found when we started to work closely with these, um, these groups was that they all were supposed to be cleaning in the same area at the same time. Um, As a result of that, we were able to say, okay, folks, between this time and this time, your group will be cleaning in this target area, which was different from the others, right? And so spreading them out while keeping them within the target area, but not on top of each other, allowed us to really see 
the difference in the trash accumulation, the difference in how we were responding to short dumping, the difference in students being able to come to and from school without uh, tripping over trash. I want to talk about the triage center. Tell me about that and why you wanted to open that up. The Parker administration is in the process of looking at what would a triage center look like or what would a center look like when you're on the street in Kensington uh, and you're talking to families or you're talking to those who are suffering from addiction or you're talking to providers or you're talking to residents, one of the things that you hear often, and it is very common in all, all of our districts is where do we take people if they tell you that they want to come off the street, right? I think that all of us on the caucus agree that allowing people to live on our sidewalks is is irresponsible, right? It is inhumane of us to allow it to continue. But where do we take them? And I think that was a question that not just the caucus heard, but that the administration has also heard. And so together we have been talking about what exactly do we do, right? Where do we take them? Is it a triage center? Is it a resource center? Is it a shelter? What does it look like? And so I think that triage center kind of stuck to people and that's what they That's what we've been calling it. But the goal is to identify that place to bring people in out of the elements, really identify where they are physically. Uh, Many of the people that are living unhoused um, suffer from wounds and have a lot of underlying health issues that really need to be addressed before we start talking about uh, prevention and recovery. And so the, the conversation that we have been supporting the park administration with is where is that physical location where people uh, are brought into and, and out of the elements um, where we could provide some wraparound services to. More on this issue after the break. This is CityCast Philly. What do you hear from service providers who work with unhoused people or people experiencing addiction? I think that it just depends on who you're talking to, right? I think some of these service providers don't want to work themselves out of a job. And then there are service providers that are really doing everything they possibly can to be able to bring or restore quality of life to the residents of the Kensington community. So it really depends. Some of them are very concerned about the unhoused population's wounds. Some of them are very concerned about the time frame that it would take us to address what an individual is going through and will we be able to respond fast enough before they go into that dope safe dope sick phase, I guess is what they're calling it. And others are concerned about, you know, are we forcing people to accept recovery? The answer is no, we're not. We recognize that every single individual that is living on the streets of Kensington has their own story about how they got there and where they are right now. And they're in a different place on their journey. And so we are uh, partnering, like I said before, with everyone that has a service uh, that they are providing and who are willing to work with us to respond to the need on the ground differently than what we've been doing it up to now because we recognize that how we've been doing it for many years has not worked. I want to talk about another big story from your district is that two new city-run health centers are coming. Tell me why these centers will be important in your district. The, the health department um, and the city of Philadelphia started to do a survey. Uh, one of the questions was, do you use a health center? And if so, where? Many of those residents um, responded yes, and, and they responded that they use Health Center 10, which is found in the Northeast. Uh, when they went to Health Center 10 and they surveyed where these residents were coming from, they were coming from a zip code in my district known as 19124. And so the, the, the research showed that they needed a health center that would be able to um, address a, a large uh, constituency of people. Health Center 10 currently, in order for an adult to get an appointment, would have to wait uh, months to be able to, to see a doctor. And so what, what that means is that our community gets sicker 
as a result of not being able to see a primary physician. Um, some of their health concerns uh, get worse. Some of our children are not able to attend school or return to school for something as simple as a vaccine or an outdated vaccination record. Some of them are not able to participate in after school or sports activities as a result of not having a, a a full physical. And so all of these things are things that can be avoided if we had a, a location that was ready to respond to their need. And so we, we have identified two locations. One will be at the Frankfurt uh, Transportation Center um, that will be a part of a mixed use development uh, pr- project. Uh, and the other one was earmarked to to go to the Friends Hospital campus. What are some other challenges you like to fix in the areas you represent? One of the things that we need to work on better in the 7th Council District is um, housing, right? We have a huge housing crisis. We don't have enough places for people to live for the amount of people that are in need of affordable housing. And so the southern end of my district being quickly gentrified and people having to be uh, having to move as a, as a result of displacement and not being able to afford a community that they have generationally called home. It's, it's a lot, right? I mean, we have to find spaces uh, throughout the 7th Council District where we can offer affordable housing. And recognize that not everyone is going to be a homeowner. People like to rent. People don't want the responsibilities of being a homeowner. So we need to be able to create um, spaces that would work for everyone. Some of our seniors want to age in place. They don't want to go elsewhere. They want to age in place. So finding um, spaces or creating development projects that would help to uh, allow our seniors to age in place is something that I want to work on. Okay, so a lot of things there. I want to shout out some positives, though, and help people who may not know the 7th District very well to get to know it a little bit better. So we give a lot of recommendations on our show. So we're going to ask you this. What's your favorite park in the 7th District? I would choose Northwood Park. It is it is the park that I now call my home park. Um, and it's not really big. It's, it's a small park, but it is a community space. And residents tend to congregate there just after a, an evening stroll to walk their dog or just to uh, catch get some fresh air. Favorite restaurant in the 7th District? My favorite restaurant would probably have to be Freddie and Tony's restaurant is a small community, uh, family-owned business. What do they serve? What's your favorite dish? Delicious Spanish food. So I tend to eat the same thing all the time, rice and beans. I'll eat pork chops. I'll eat chicken. I'll eat, you know, I I, um, I love uh, Spanish food. And so I always enjoy stopping into small places like that that remind me of my grandma's kitchen. Nice. What about favorite bar? Do you have a favorite bar that you like to go to at seventh in seventh district? Favorite bar, halftime, good time is my favorite bar, which is found in the Norris Square community. Okay, what about this one? Favorite piece of public art in the district? Wow. Okay, so Mural Arts partnered with a Puerto Rican artist, and you're going to kill me because I cannot remember his name right now, but the mural is of a Puerto Rican woman superhero. It's in the Nara Square community. I'm not even going to say the name of the Black because I can't remember it, and I know I'm going to get it wrong. Okay, I think we just pulled up a picture of it, and it is really, really beautiful. There's this woman superhero holding the Puerto Rican flag, and there's also faces of other historical folks. Do you know who they are? They are people who have been pioneers in the Latino community who have done um, something very significant in the in the Latino Philadelphia community and as we migrated here. All right. That was Council Member Ketsi Lozada. Thanks so much for coming on CityCast Philly. Thank you so much for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode with council member Ketsi Lozada, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. 
We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye.